What is up, YouTube? What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So, it's South Carolina. Time to vote. Um, we're expecting a nice, easy victory for Bernie Sanders. Um, well, no, that's not true. I mean, obviously, Joe Biden is actually leading the polls in South Carolina. He is expected to win. But, you know, with the uh, relatively unenthused crowd that I've been speaking to out on the campaign trail, who knows? It's kind of up in the air. Uh, I think they said he's at 28% last time I checked, so it should be fairly interesting. But today we're going to be talking about how to ball like Bernie Sanders because, you know, everybody wants to ball. And I've just been trying to figure out, like, how can I live that life? Like, how can I get down with, you know, getting as close to hitting that, you know, that wealth tax threshold um, in a Bernie Sanders administration? Because this truly is the question, right? Like, we're wondering, how is our economy going to function if Bernie Sanders becomes president? Can I still get that that Ferrari? Is that still a possibility? Am I able to, you know, get that offshore bank account? Is an island still in my possible realm of of, uh, of possibility? But first, I want to talk about Tom Steyer. Now, Tom Steyer last week unleashed the cringiest uh, performance. Well, it wasn't an endorsement, but TLC actually performed at a Tom Steyer rally last week, and I just thought, wow, I don't know what this guy's doing. He's he's really going for it. Um, really trying to shamelessly get that black vote. But he just took it to the next level with his latest um, performance with uh, rapper Juvenile. So if you guys, <laughs> you may or may not have seen this, but uh, Tom Steyer on stage with Juvenile, backing that ass up. Take a gander. I've been listening to it on a loop for like the last 20 minutes. Oh, wait. You can't see it. Hold on. <laughs> My bad. Uh, let's. There we go. And yes, that is his wife in the blue dress. How bad do you want that black vote? Are you willing to get up on stage and make a total ass of yourself for it? Now, I, I, I'm going to be real with you guys. Yes, he's pandering, but I think he genuinely is stuck in like 1996-ish. I could be wrong on the year there because that would account for both the juvenile and the TLC. Like he genuinely enjoys this music and that's, or at least at that time, like that's his last recollection of, what would a black person be doing right now? TLC and Juvenile, obviously. So he made those dreams come true. So shout out to TLC, or shout out to uh, to Tom Steyer. But seriously, you guys got to stop wasting your money on rappers. Like, it's kind of insulting. You could have spent, I mean, I, I imagine you paid Juvenile like 50 racks, maybe 100. I don't know. I don't know how in, in demand Juvenile is. But you probably paid him a nice chunk of money that you could have taken and actually like given to like a foundation or an organization or a group of people or something. Like paying rappers to come out and perform at your, at your shows to get black people to vote for you is like, that's, that's, that's so 1999. Like, didn't we learn that? We did that with Barack Obama. We did the, the free Jay-Z shows. We did that. It was cool because it was Jay-Z, but now you guys aren't even getting that level. Like, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to go and get, I don't know, who's pop. You got to get, like, uh, NBA Youngboy. You got to get um, Lil Baby. Like, you got to get somebody who's, like, hot in the streets, and Juvenile just ain't it, Chief. So, <laughs> my eyes. So, that's... That that's just some entertainment, but we're gonna we're gonna move on, man. Um, I want to talk to you guys about Bernie Sanders now. Like I said, I was concerned. Am I still gonna be able to ball if Bernie Sanders becomes president? And apparently, I can. I just haven't figured out how to do it just quite the way Bernie gets down. So you guys know that Bernie is outspending his rivals on private jets, the PJs as we like to call them, uh, with 1.9 million in spending last year. You know, Joe Biden put himself in the red ride in those jets. It, it can get quite expensive. I mean, just just fueling up a jet will cost you like 25, 30. I don't know. I don't ride jets, but it's a lot of money. But some fine journalist decided to do some research and we have a uh, Actual, this is more of a, this is like like more <laughs> more satirical than anything, but I've found the parts that we really need to focus on. 
how does Bernie Sanders seem to make all this money? And, you know, senators actually pretty good job. I think, I think they start out like 80 or something. I don't know. Again, not a senator. I don't know. But they seem to be doing fairly well. But it's all about those backdoor deals. Like, that's when you really get paid. And, you know, Bernie Sanders is a man who's about the people. He's about being an honest actor. He's about um, standing up for workers' rights. So it's like, how could somebody like that manage to, you know, do fairly well for himself in America with those principles? Well, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. So this is, uh, I don't know if this is reposted, but this is in lawenforcementtoday.com. Um, this is an analysis of Bernie Sanders. Well, I'll just tell you what it is. It starts out, Bernie Sanders, you are a hypocrite. You've been in public service for 30 years, starting out when he was only the mayor of Burlington, Vermont. He went on to the House as a congressman, then on to the United States Senate. 30 years later, Bernie Sanders is a very wealthy man. Now, again, I'm not going to be reading this thing verbatim, but I will be talking about the highlights. So the person who has actually benefited most from Bernie Sanders' foray into the political world has been his wife, Jane. Now, you guys have seen Jane. She's always up there. And you, you may, may, may or may not know a lot about Jane. She was the uh, president of, what's this, is it Burlington College, I believe is the name of it. Um, she, she's done some things. But mostly, she's just tied herself to, blood, uh, to Bernie Sanders' political campaigns in some very interesting ways. Uh, when... Sanders was elected as mayor of Burlington. He appointed Jane Driscoll, his then girlfriend, uh, to his administration's youth office. Originally an unpaid position, Sanders eventually put her on the payroll despite the objections of the city council. So that's what you got to do, man. You got this. This is going to sound eerily close to some some Hunter Biden uh, type. It's not. I won't say scandal. You know, he's just playing the game. It's just a little nepotism. This is just how you got to work it. I mean, again, if you end up in that public jobs guarantee you're gonna have to make sure you start dating the boss's daughter in this case it'll be a you know different boss but nonetheless same rules will apply you know you gotta cuddle uh, cuddle up to whoever um, has the most influence because whoever's giving out those jobs is gonna have a little bit more influence than the average person what's up steve what's up everybody (laughs) two million at the age of 78 is not wealthy you know random user here's a here's an interesting thing it's like when pete mayor pete says uh I'm the poorest one up on this stage. Well, yeah, but isn't that kind of by design? Like, do we, do, you, do we think that it would be hard for a Bernie Sanders to accumulate 10, maybe 15, possibly $20 million in wealth relatively easily? Like, sure, he, he might not have hundreds of millions, but could he get it? I, I think he could get it pretty, pretty easily. If you, saved, if you save money in a Roth area, you easily have a few million when you retire. Let's talk about it. So this uh, particular job um, was never posted to outsiders. In 1988, after the couple was married, Jane received a huge pay increase. One newspaper reported the resulting outrage over the move. Political sparks fly at Burlington's annual city meeting Monday night as Democratic aldermen raised a series of questions concerning a hefty pay raise for Mayor Bernie Sanders' new wife and whether she would continue to hold her job as the director of the mayor's youth office. In 1990, Crazy Bernie was elected to Congress. Stunningly, Jane Sanders became a member of his staff, serving in various positions such as chief of staff, press secretary, and political analyst. After nearly 10 years in uh, Congress, Jane Sanders set up a company that operated under three different names to provide income tied to Bernie Sanders' political career. (laughs) Got to play the game, people. You got to play the game. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, uh, Sunday, September 27th, 2000, the Sanders clan formed Sanders and Driscoll LLC, a for-profit consulting company run by Jane, her daughter, Karina, and son, David. The business operated under two trade names, Leadership Strategies and Progressive Media Strategies. Random user says they only have $2 million. All right, let's let's investigate further. It is unknown exactly how much Sanders' clan had funneled into them because Sanders' financial disclosure forms required to be in, uh, to, uh, required to be disclosed since he is a member of Congress only listed more than one thousand dollars as the amount of income earned for these consulting firms. 
while Sanders was running for re-election in the early 2000s, critics said that Sanders doled out more than $150,000 to his wife and stepdaughter for campaign-related work between 2000 and 2004. During one such campaign, Jane served as media buyer for his re-election. According to Schweizer, media buying is a murky but politically high, uh, but politically a highly lucrative stream of income for those involved in political campaigns. Political campaigns dump tons of money into television advertising and other forms of media. The media buyer handles the purchases of airtime and, most importantly, earns a commission of 15% for the cost of media. If a campaign were to spend a million dollars, of course, they would earn $150,000 in commission. But the media buyer's commission is not subject to disclosure. Hmm. Again, I'm taking notes. You guys keep asking me to run for office, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to be a dishonest person. I don't know how to do that. But apparently, I just got to do it the right way. Then I can still claim to be a socialist if I need to. However, Bernie Sanders' 2006 campaign, uh, he worked with media buyers by the name of Barbara Abar Bougie, Boogie, I don't know, and Shelley Hartig, whose names will appear in just a moment. So... This is where we get down to the the good stuff. In 2016, Bernie uh, made a lot of money, right? Or he raised a lot of money for his campaign. A large chunk of the money, nearly 83 million, allegedly flowed to a mysterious liability company with no website, no phone number, and no office space. The LLC was registered to a private home in a cul-de-sac in suburban Virginia. The me- the LLC is called Old Town Media LLC. Now, if you look this up, you're not going to find a whole lot. In fact, um, Many reporters have tried to find out information about this Old Town Media LLC. Interesting uh, organization that may or may not exist. I'm not accusing Bernie Sanders of being like a, a tax evader. Or anything. I'm not saying any of that at all. I'm just saying this is how you ball like Bernie Sanders. Like this is, the, this is what you would have to do. Like you can't go out and say, hey, pharmaceutical company, I, I got some legislation I, you might be interested in if you send me. No, you, don't, you can't do that. You got to set up little companies and then you hire them, and then you use your political contributions to hire your own people. So that's it's a different game. But I'm learning. Bernie, I'm going to try to keep up. Listen, I'm, I'm w- more than willing to take a job in the administration. I want to learn to be like you, my friend. You seem to have it all. I'm trying to ride on some private jets myself someday. Sanders' campaign purchased a mind-boggling $82.77 million in political ads through Old Town Media, which would have earned the company a media fee of more than $12 million based on industry standards for ad buying commissions. It is unknown if Jane Sanders was a beneficiary of this financial arrangement. See, again, when there's nothing to find, there's no paper trail because you do it right, because you got to do it right, then... We don't really know. And again, whether or not he has $2 million in liquid, I don't care what that is. Can he obtain more money? Absolutely. Can Mayor Pete become a millionaire overnight? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like him saying that uh, I'm not a millionaire, I'm the poorest one on the stage, doesn't really hold weight when you have like 40 billionaires contributing to your campaign or whatever the, that actual number is. I don't want to misquote anybody. Uh, he is very capable of obtaining more money. So you, your actual financial position doesn't really mean that much. Uh, proximity to wealth is, is good enough in, in many of these cases. <laughs> Since FEC disclosures make it easy to hide where these media fees go, Jane Sanders' income from professional work at that time was listed simply as more than $1,000. Damn. Got to do it like the Sanders out here. In 2004, Jane Sanders was appointed, uh, was appointed the head of Burlington College, a private school with less than 200 students. At that time, tuition was $23,000 per year in 2014-2015. Um, but, again, most importantly, in 2009, the college agreed to a deal with a for-profit Vermont woodworking school to set up a carpentry program. The woodworking school, which was not accredited, having been launched only two years earlier, happened to be owned by Jane's daughter, Karina. Again, pay attention. Hunter, you got to you got to you got to learn from these mistakes right here. You see, y'all slipped it up. They they, they messed up. You went international. You messing with Ukraine. You can't do that. Keep it right here in the States, man. American made. The first year, Burlington College gave the woodworking school $56,474 for material charges 
and a lease of bench space. By 2010, the money had increased to more than $133,000. By 2012, the payments had escalated to $182,741 in rental costs alone. In sum, Burlington College directed more than $500,000 to Karina Sanders' woodworking school. What makes this more interesting is the fact that at the time, Burlington College was undergoing significant financial difficulties. Helps to have moms as president. Damn, it's good to be connected. In another instance of quid pro quo, the woodworking school received at least one federal grant from the, you know, the USDA to install biomass heating. Guess who sat on the powerful Senate Budget Committee, which had congressional oversight of the USDA's budget? That's right, Bernard. Bernard knows how to do it. Bernard's like, look, I've been laying out this, this socialism thing for a long time, fam. You're not going to ruin this for me. This is how you got to do it. You got to go set up a real business. We got to actually, you know, distribute some products or something like that. We're not going to just be hiring you to do nothing. We're just going to overpay you to do something that you don't really need to do anyway. At the time, ah, the college continued experiencing financial difficulties and the college was failing. Yet money continued to pour into Karina Sanders' business, and Jane Sanders' salary as president continued to rise. By 2009, she was making $160,000, including benefits. No wonder he wants free college. He knows exactly the problem. <laughs> of course he knows the problem. He's been benefiting from it. People tell me you don't have to have a wife if you want to... Or people tell me that I, having a wife is a liability. No, no. Having a wife? It's an asset, my friend. In 2011, Jane Sanders was asked to leave amidst the college being unable to pay its debts and failing behind in loan, uh, in, in loan payments. She received $200,000 on the way out the door. Damn! In 2016, the college collapsed. So, that's how you do it, people. That's how you bought. 